almost three years ago, I reviewed an awesome Zelda-like clone called Newtopia. Well, there was a sequel released late in the Turbo's life, and it also was great if you enjoyed the first. In fact, Newtopia 2 is so much like the original, it's almost a clone of a clone. Newtopia, a place of harmony, but not for long. Dearth, the Emperor of Darkness, is secretly rising once again and has sniffed out the evil concealed beneath this peaceful land. Jezeta, the hero from the first game, has gone missing in a labyrinth. <laughs> Stupid. So, it is up to you to find him and save the Newtopians from living in constant fear. And by you, I mean you. At the beginning of this one, you enter a name for the main character. If you choose your own, well, you will be the hero and be used in text throughout the game. I knew I was destined for greater things. Oh yeah. Just like before, Newtopia 2 is an overhead action RPG, mainly split into two areas, the overworld and the underworld, or labyrinths. In the overworld areas, you walk around, talk to people, buy stuff, defeat some enemies, and eventually locate the various labyrinths. The game lays out the majority of the story in these areas, and is overall more diverse this time around. Instead of just finding medallions, which you also will have to do, you need to locate various items in order to proceed through the game. Most of these, however, are located underground. Talking to villagers is even more important than before because they will often reveal what you need to do next. <laughs> That's funny. The overworld also has some other goodies, including secret passages by pushing rocks or burning away trees. You will meet special monks who increase your life force and the ability to hold more bombs. Since bombing is very necessary, the more the better. You will also find awesome chicks who replenish your energy or give you a password. Just hope you have internal memory to save the game because this password is crazy. Now for the underworlds, the labyrinths. Once here, you need to find a crystal ball in order to reveal the map. Then you locate various armor and other items. And finally, you need to snag the key in order to... Oh! Sneaky! Sneaky! You have to snag the key in order to enter the boss crypt, the evil who guards your exit. In order to be allowed passage into adjoining rooms, you often have to defeat all enemies on screen, push a specific block, or blow open a wall. These labyrinths require some major searching, and a lot of items are pretty well hidden. Now, some things you can skip. In this playthrough, I did not even get the Wind Staff, even though Dearth steals it from me in the end. Hmm. But since you are required to have all gold materials and a Sun Sword to fight him, you have to search whether you like it or not. Your character control is improved in this version, as you can walk diagonally instead of just being restricted to the four-way direction of Jezeta. This was something about the original I didn't care for, as only the weapon could be shot out that way. Now, it is tough to swipe at an enemy at first because the directional pad will want to push him in the wrong direction, but you will get used to it quickly, and it is a welcome addition. You move very slow at the beginning, but after the third labyrinth, you will find snow boots that keep you from slipping and increase your speed. And may I say, thank God. Your character can attack short range with his sword, but also long range by using items and finding the fire, wind, and lightning staffs. After defeating enemies, sometimes they will leave behind coins, bombs, hearts, Wings of Return, which take you back to the last save point, and many other items. Some of these can also be purchased by your character or found in chests. Most of them are stored in the good old submenu or inventory screen, accessed by pressing Run. Items you can select, items you hold, 
compass, key, and the crystal, which will then reveal the labyrinth map. The graphics and animations are a little upgraded this time. Just as before, it retains a colorful and consistently nice appearance. I love some of the new touches like really cool underwater effects. The labyrinths look good, although they have very little variation from one to another. Overall, Newtopia 2 has a really great look. The music and sound is good, but honestly, a bit too much of the same from the first game. It's peaceful and nice, and it flows along with the action well, but it doesn't really change things up very much, and will sound similar throughout the quest. Now, I already mentioned the controls, and they are pretty responsive. The multi-direction is great, and attacking is rather a breeze. Switching between menus and items is really quick. You know what? No complaints here. Newtopia 2 is a lot of fun to play, has a decent length, and is a really engaging quest. But it's not without its flaws. The labyrinth levels are extremely expansive, and that is great. But some of them are way too expansive. The sixth one is a logistical nightmare, with a handful of levels and even bridges leading to other sides. In this stage, you have to find the Golden Shield, which is located in an area not shown on the map. You'll be using all of your medicine, all of your bombs, and then the Wings of Return to head back, recharge, and try it again many times. That chained up old guy has some great information, but he repeats it every time you re-enter his prison and you cannot skip it. Ugh. One of my major complaints this time is the use of the Fire Staff, my favorite weapon from the original. It works exactly the same, but this time it pushes enemies into you. Ah! You have to be behind a pillar or extremely far away if you choose to use this weapon. This is a pretty big flaw in my opinion, and as a result the flame does not come in handy as much as it did before. Ah! Come on! Aside from those few things, the game does have a lot of new positives to balance it all out. I love Newtopia 2. It gives you hours of enjoyment, and both games in the series are true TurboGrafx gems. I have had some people ask me if I could do a walkthrough of the games I review, so since it is the holiday season, this one is for you guys. Get a pencil. Get the Chalice of Agony from the first boss, use it on the lava to make it solid and cross to the pool. Go to Uria's Shrine, get the Manipula Herb from the second labyrinth, give the herb to the princess to cure her and she takes you to the Oracle. Pour the Chalice of Agony on her and she opens the staircase to the next area. Find the Moonbeam Moss, save the old labyrinth adventurer guy to get the Rainbow Drop, visit the Cobbler to get the Snow Boots, get the Aqualung from the fourth labyrinth, use the Aqualung to pass the underwater levels, defeat the Kraken, talk to Jezeta, get the Sword of Legends, find out Princess was kidnapped, go all the way back to Uria's Shrine, use the Sword of Legends on the altar to reveal the passage. Meet the Weapons Maker who will upgrade your sword if you bring him the Sun Flame. Find the hidden old guy for Lightning Staff, save the girl for the Flute of Murdoch, get the Bell of Heaven, ring the bell to find the Sun Flame, use Flute to awaken the Ice Giant and get the Yellow Medallion, the Weapon Guy now upgrades you to the Sun Sword, visit the Scientist to gain entry to the Volcano Mouth, defeat the Salamander for the Red Medallion, kill the Blue Blob to get the Blue Medallion, reveal and enter statues, save Princess to get the Green Medallion, and finally place the Medallions to reveal Dirth's Lair. <sighs> Micro Machines sold separately. Utopia 2 has a lot of great new positives, a couple of new negatives, and much of the same. As a result, I enjoyed the sequel as much as the first, even though this one does feel a tad more polished than its predecessor. If you like Zelda clones, trust me, loyal followers, you'll enjoy Utopia 2 and we'll be back for more.